So here is the second lecture in our exploration of the bones of the skull. In our introduction, we showed that there were three groups of bones in the skull, the cranium, eight bones, the face, 14 bones, and six ossicles. So in this lecture, we're going to explore the 14 bones of the face. And here is the face with the cranium eliminated. There are bones that are going to be included into this. You can see that part of the orbit, which is definitely part of the face, is or the eye socket, um, is structured from the frontal bone, which is part of the cranium. But let's focus on these 14 bones, most of them paired. In the anterior part of the face, probably the most prominent bone here is called the maxilla. It is the bone in yellow. Um, you can see it forms all of the upper jaw. All of the upper teeth are in the maxilla. The maxilla, um, therefore, forms a good deal of the roof of the mouth, or what we would probably better call the ceiling of the mouth, and thus the navel, nasal cavity floor. Um, the nasal cavity and the oral cavity are like a two-story apartment building where there's a space below and a space above so that if you lived on the first floor of an apartment building, your ceiling is somebody else's floor. Um, so the maxilla fills that role between the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Um, you can see it sweeps up and into the orbit. Um, and we generally think of a majority of the floor of the orbits is formed by the maxilla. And in and around the nasal cavity, you can see not only is it the floor, but it also forms the sidewalls of the nasal cavity. Um, and it even sweeps all the way up. You can see a little bit of it actually meets the frontal bone up there near the, the eyebrow area. The maxilla also has a sinus. Uh, if you look at those two maxilla, right above the jaw area. Both those areas are hollow. Here's a picture of the maxilla from a medial aspect like this. And you can see that that hollowed out area into the lateral part of the maxilla. So <clears throat> two maxilla here in yellow, and then two zygomatic bones, the bones that are in green in the picture, form the side walls of the orbit, they form the prominence of your cheek, what people call their cheekbones. Those two side prominence are the zygomatic bones. And again, you can see both of these are paired. There are two maxilla, two zygomatics. There are also two nasal bones over the upper part of the nasal cavity. Um, you can see two little green bones in the picture. They form sort of a little gable. Um, this is the area that, uh, at least in English, we usually refer to as the bridge of the nose, uh, the part that bridges from the forehead down toward the cartilaginous part of the, bone, of the nose. Here's what the nose looks like with the cartilaginous part filled in. We can drop that out of here. Um, so you can see clearly the two nasal bones. So there are six out of the 14 in three pairs, two maxilla, two zygomatic, two nasal. You see them clearly here. The fourth pair of bones are called the lacrimal bones. And you see these in the picture look just inside the orbit. Um, if you're going from outside to inside the orbit, you see the nasal bones in green. You see where the two maxilla come up and uh, are next to those nasal bones. And then just inside that, you see sort of a bluish gray bone, sort of a vertical rectangle. That little bone is called the lacrimal bone. The lacrimal bone um, forms part of the medial wall of the orbit. And it also makes reference, the name makes reference to tears. If you're a Spanish speaker, <clears throat> 
you know that the word for tears is lagrimas, which comes out of the same Latin word lacrimal, which means tears. And these are the little bones right in the inside corner of your eye, right where your tears would drip out of the corner of your eye. Um, the term lacrimal is also used for a gland. In the orbit is a gland called the lacrimal gland, which is what produces the majority of your tears. The little lacrimal bone, we said, forms part of the medial wall of the orbit. And here you can see all three bones. You can see the nasal bone in green, the lacrimal bone in purple. And you see just inside that, the brown bone, that's part of the ethmoid bone. Oh, that's that orbital plate of the ethmoid. What is also interesting, I think, right here is the lacrimal bone actually has the entrance into a canal that runs down into the nasal passages. So in this picture, you see the little number one. That's the position of the lacrimal gland producing tears. Tears are washed across the eye. <clears throat> and if you're weeping heavily, they drip out of the corner of your eye. But typically, and even when you're crying, <clears throat> most of those tears run down through the corner of your eye through that lacrimal, nasal lacrimal uh, duct and down into the nasal passages. So you probably weren't aware of it, but um, when you have uh, a significant crying episode, um, your nose usually gets very, very wet and runny. Well, it isn't the nose being sympathetic. It's the actual draining of many of those tears from your eyes down into your nose through this duct. Under normal circumstances, um, it keeps excess tears from just dripping out the front of your eye like you're crying. Um, it allows those tears to run down into your nasal passages. So kind of a cool little thing to know. I don't know if you're into weird YouTube videos, but um, I have seen some YouTube videos where people can actually um, run run fluids from their nose up and out the corner of their eyes there by putting some reverse pressure from inside their nose. Um, and even air bubbles you can get up and out through that, uh, that little duct in, from the nas nasal area back into the eyes. So uh, we see three bones right here, and it's a good idea to, to notice that ethmoid bone one more time there. Um, and this is probably a good time to just make note of the bones of the orbit. Uh, there are six bones that form the plates of the orbit. And you can see them here, the frontal bone above, the sphenoid bone in the back, the ethmoid bone and the lacrimal bone on the medial wall of the orbit, the zygomatic on the lateral wall, and the maxilla on the floor of the orbit. So six walls, six orbital plates forming the structure of the orbit itself. So we're up to eight bones, four pairs, including those lacrimals. Let's look for our fifth pair. To do that, we need to turn the skull so we're looking from below. And from this aspect, look at the roof or ceiling of the mouth. You can see where the teeth are all in the yellow jaw, the maxilla. But notice the posterior part of that ceiling to the orbit is a green bone, a pair of green bones, known as the palatine bones. Uh, the palatine bones have a horizontal plate, which is what you're looking at and actually have a vertical piece to them as well. Let's look at the entire bone. Right now we're looking from an inferior view. Let's look at the bone from an anterior view. If I'm looking straight on it, notice it, how it has the same shape as the side and the floor of the nasal passage. And it has both 
a horizontal plate and a vertical plate to it. It's sort of an L-shaped flat bone. Um, let me show you how it fits into the, uh, the nasal area, just like this. Okay, so it's shaped very much like the maxilla in this aspect from forming the floor of the nasal cavity and the sidewall, but the bone is actually behind the maxilla where we can't typically see it. Right, so um, being so difficult to see there, really the only typical view we have of this bone is when we look inferiorly like this and we see the horizontal plate crossing over the posterior part of the hard palate. Um, you might typically say that the maxilla forms the anterior two-thirds of the palate, whereas the palatine bones form that posterior pair the posterior part of the hard palate. So there's bones 9 and 10, the two palatine bones, the fifth pair of bones. And so now we want to look for the sixth pair of bones. And these are the three nasal concha. I know the word looks like concha, and I have known some Hispanic young ladies with the name concha. Uh, concha, from that standpoint, is a seashell, um, a delicate, typically a delicate little spiraling seashell. But to pronounce it in the Latin way, the way you would hear it in a medical situation, uh, there are three nasal concha. Let me take you back to our study of the respiratory system, where we notice that, that the nasal passages are very narrow and slit-like back at the main part of the nasal passage, not out in front um, in the actual nose part that protrudes where the vestibule, the hollow space is, but when you get behind that, those narrow slits are formed by three bones that grow down and into the nasal passages and make them very, very tight. So there are three. There is a superior pair of nasal concha, there are middle nasal concha, and there are inferior nasal concha. So three bony features and especially the inferior and the middle one sort of form a curling sort of structure, which is where their relationship to a, a snail shell, a sea snail shell would come. Um, in a typical view like this, right, you can't see the superior ones. They're going to be way up high, hidden behind the nasal bones. But you can typically see the middle and the inferior pair. And look at the middle pair for a moment. You can see that they are brown. Um, and the brown is the color we've been using with the ethmoid bone. You can see that superior part of the nasal septum is brown. And the middle nasal concha is brown. But look at the inferior nasal concha for a moment, and you see they're a different color, aren't they? They are a gray color. And that inferior nasal concha is actually a pair of bones unto themselves. They are, they are not a part of a different bone. They are a bone that is sutured into the sidewall of the nasal passage. And so to get a good view of this, what we need to do is we need to go into the nasal passage. Let's do that. Let's look at it from the side so we really get a good view of it. And here you go. So here is, um, here are a view of the three nasal concha. Let's place the bones here. This pink bone is the frontal bone. Um, you can see the two nasal bones would be here. The maxilla is in yellow. Notice the maxilla running up the inside, uh, the lateral wall of what would be the nasal cavity, because 
we're looking at it from a medial aspect. Right behind the maxilla is the palatine bone. That's the one in green. Remember how it had a horizontal plate and a vertical plate? Here's where you see that. The sphenoid bone is the one in orange. And you might remember me talking about a piece of the sphenoid that runs down next to the posterior nasal apertures. You can see those here. The ethmoid bone is the one in brown. And uh, if you see the two curling rounded pieces from above would be the superior and the middle nasal concha. And that light gray bone right in dead center, it's sutured into the maxilla and part of the palatine. That is the inferior nasal concha. And it's actually covering the opening into the maxillary sinus too. So there's, there's a good way to view the inferior nasal concha. That makes 12 bones, six pairs. And this is probably a good idea, good time to review the sinuses too. We've noticed two bones previously that form sinuses. Um, so let's go over all, um, let's go over all four bones, the frontal bone, you can see those orange sinuses up in the center aspect of your forehead. Those are the, the frontal bone has hollow sinuses in it. The ethmoid bone, we've mentioned that before, the little green area uh, in around the ethmoid bone between the two orbits, um, sometimes called the ethmoid air cells. Um, the sphenoid bone um, if you look at the um, side view, the lateral view, you can see those are deep in behind the eyes. And then the two maxillary sinuses down below in the cheeks, the ones that are a little more sort of dark brown or, or sort of a slightly purplish color. Those are the two maxillary sinuses. So four bones that have extensive um, paranasal sinuses, you should be able to identify those um, four bones specifically. Then finally, um, we're getting close to the end here. Since we're in that nasal area, let's look more closely at the nasal septum. Again, we're in sort of a medial view of the nasal passage, but this time we're looking right at the nasal septum. We don't have the nasal septum removed and we're looking at the sidewall like we did before. Here's the nasal septum and you can see that there are three pieces of tissue here. The brown part is of course the perpendicular plate, what is known as the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, which forms the superior part of the nasal septum. Anteriorly, the gray part is hyaline cartilage that forms the prominence of your nose, but notice that it dives back in in sort of a wedge-like piece to anchor itself deep into the nasal passage. And then the next bone that we want to look at, which is of interest, is the blue bone that you see here. <clears throat> this is the bone known as the vomer, and this is an unpaired bone. All the other bones we've looked at so far maxilla, zygomatic, nasal, lacrimal, palatine, and inferior nasal concha. Those are all paired bones. The vomer is unpaired, and you could probably guess that. It's a single bone dead center in the skull. It's the one you see in blue. Um, the vomer looks like this by itself, and typically if you see it in a view like this, where you can see into the nasal cavity, you can see the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid brown, and that tiny little bit of blue is all you can see from the anterior aspect. But know that it's the inferior part of the nasal septum. So that's 13 bones, six pairs of two, and the vomer 13, and one last bone, the lower jaw number 14. The lower jaw, or the mandible, is actually 
or it actually develops from two bones. When you're in your mother's womb, there are two bones growing side by side, and uh, later in life, they fuse together in the center and become one solid single piece from, um, from joint to joint. So that is the mandible. And those are the facial bones, 14 bones, six paired bones, two unpaired bones, and that is the face. So there you have it.